So question three, it's uh, in a hockey match, a hockey ball is hit 18 metres uh, from the front of the goal. The ball leaves the hockey stick with an initial velocity V and an angle of theta to the horizontal ground. The ball passes over the goal at a maximum height of 2 metres, as shown in figure 3. The initial vertical component of the velocity of the ball is 6.3 metres per second. Air resistance has a negligible effect on the motion of the ball, and we've got to show that the time t taken for the ball to reach the maximum height is about 0.6 seconds. So we've got the vertical component is 6.3 metres per second. Um, and this is going to be a SUVAT type question. We know that S is going to be 2 metres vertically. At this max, sorry, the initial um, velocity is 6.3 metres per second. The final velocity at the top at its maximum height will be zero in the vertical direction and the acceleration due to gravity is going to be minus 9.81 meters per second squared and we are after the time. Now because we've got all of these uh, we've got all of the uh, variables here and we're just after one of them we, we can choose any of the equations as long as it's got time in it so I would go with V equals U plus a t, so it's the simplest one, you know that v is zero and that's going to equal u plus a t, so um, let's take, we know that u will equal minus a t, therefore t is going to equal u over minus a, so Substitute in, we're going to have 6.3 divided by minus minus 9.81, making it positive. Stick those numbers into the calculator, and that gives me 0.64 seconds. Okay, part two, use your answer to part one, 0.64 seconds, and figure three to show that the horizontal component of the velocity of the ball as it leaves the hockey stick is about 30 meters per second. Now what we know is that this horizontally, this is going to travel 18 meters to the point where it's at its maximum height. So, because it's, it's traveling 18 meters, we know that the velocity will be the displacement over the time. So, if I go 18 meters divided by 0.64, I get 28 meters per second, which is about 30. We've now got to calculate the magnitude of the initial velocity v of the ball. And in the first part of the blurb, it tells us that the vertical component is 6.3 meters per second. And we've now just worked out that that is 28 meters per second. You could use the 30 in this one if you were unable to do the last one, which is perfectly fine. And we're after the magnitude of that. So we've got a right angled triangle. So Pythagoras' theorem tells me that V is going to be equal 6.3 squared plus 18 squared. And take the square root. And I get an answer of 28.7, so it's two significant figures, 29 meters per second.
onto part B. The hockey ball has a mass of 0.16 kilograms. We've got to calculate the initial kinetic energy of the ball as it leaves the hockey stick. But well, we've now worked out that we've got uh, our V is 28.7 meters per second. It doesn't matter if, you've used, if you're going to use the rounded version, but I'm just keeping what's in my calculator going. Um, kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So that's going to equal 0 0.16 times 28.7 squared divided by 2. And that gives me an answer of 66 joules. Calculate the change in gravitational potential energy, EP, of the ball as it moves from the ground to the maximum height. Well, we know it's going up by 2 metres, and we know that the, uh, the mass of the ball was 0 0.160 kilograms. So Gain in gravitational potential energy is going to be mgh. So we've got 0.16 times 9.81 times 2. So it's lifted off the ground. Uh, sorry, it's gained 3. Point one joules of potential energy. Now we've got to calculate the kinetic energy of the ball at the height. Well, we know it started off with 66 joules of kinetic energy and it's now lost um, 3.1 of those joules to gravitational potential energy, so the difference between those will be the remaining amount of kinetic energy and that is 62.8 so I'm just going to go with 63 joules. The hockey ball is replaced with a ball that is affected by air resistance. This ball is hit with the hockey stick so that it leaves the stick with the same initial velocity V. Now on figure 3 sketch the path the ball is likely to take They've kind of been leading you down the road because they're working out with the energy. So now we're going to lose kinetic energy, not just to gravitational, but we're going to lose the sum to the frictional forces. So initially, the ball will strike it, but because it's losing energy at a greater rate, it's not going to be able to get up to its maximum height. And therefore, so it will start off pretty similar, but it will come to a maximum height sooner and then drop back down. 